Okay, here we are on Monday after the launch of Supernodes. Supernodes were launched last Thursday uh, for Zencash. And so I just want to take a little quick update on the launch, um, the rewards, and kind of what's going on right now. The um, installation video that I had previously posted is already outdated due to some updates, which I will cover after we go over this part. So the very first thing is let's take a look at secure nodes. So here we are on the main on the main secure node tracker page. And you can see that at the moment there are 10,500 nodes that are up. There's 1,700 that are down um, and another 1,024 that are inactive. Now that probably represents about 2,000 secure nodes that became super nodes, but some of them might just be outdated for whatever reason. Um, so the ones that are getting paid each day are the number of ones that are up. So let's use that number and let's do a quick calculation. So currently you're getting 0 0.0587 per day. So let's um, 0 0.0587 per day. You need 42 Zen. So that gives us 0 0.0014 basically. 0 0.0014 Zen per Zen that is staked. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the super nodes and you can see that there are currently 1288 super nodes that are up, 65 that are currently in the down and 42 that are inactive. So that are going to get paid today, more or less is going to be about 1288. So let's do that same thing. So 0 0.5322, 0 0.5322 divided by 500 and we can see that you're actually going to be making less per Zen than you are with the secure node at this moment in time. Now, it costs about double to run a secure node over, well, to run 12 secure nodes than it does to run one super node. So one super node right now, um, assuming you use Hetzner, which is probably the best performing inexpensive um, VPS provider is going to be about $18 per month. Multiply that by 12 and you have 216. Now, on the other hand, you can run, so that was, that's the server cost of running one super node. If you're going to run one secure node, then it is um, 335 using the OVH two gigabyte um, VPS plan. One of the changes that occurred in, during this fork is that under the new version of Zen, you don't need as much memory to run a secure node now. So you can get away with the lower level. And then in the meantime, um, OVH also increased their hard drive space on that lowest node from 10 to 20 gigabytes. So now you can run a secure node on that lowest level plan. So multiply that by 12 and that gives you 40. So multiply that by 12 because that's the number of secure secure nodes you'd have to run to equal about 500 zen and that gives you 482 so it's going to cost you double in just secure just the server cost to run that number of secure nodes versus one super node you also have the setup fees if you're paying someone like me or you know, some me, either me or someone like me to run your nodes, there's going to be a, a setup fee and a maintenance fee associated with those nodes. If you're doing it yourself, well, then you're paying yourself. So would you rather be spending time with your family? You'd be rather be spending time running secure nodes. So overall, the cost of running the nodes is actually less than it is with a, with a super node. Now, which one of them is better to run? Well, that's up to you. You've got to figure out your total cost, but you also have to figure out what your long-term plan is. With Supernodes, one of the long-term plans that Zencash has is to enable other forms of revenue, such as renting out the server to um, do computations or store um, data on. One of the recent changes allowed um, data, um, data to be stored in the blockchain. So one of the potential uses right now of Zencash is to store is to store GPG um, private keys so in a secure way. So that would be another example of 
you can make more money in the future by holding a super note. So if you're a long-term supporter of Zencash and you're a long-term believer, then I think you're probably better off long-term running a super note. But if you don't have 500 Zen, there's certainly nothing wrong with running secure nodes right now. Now, I had known that eventually this day would happen, but I did not expect it to occur within the very first week of Supernodes. Um, so that's where we have to take into account right now. Oh, another um, advantage of secure nodes, though, is let's say that your Supernode goes down for the day then you lose that entire day's worth of your rewards. Whereas if you have a single secure node go down, well, you still got 11 that are left over. If you're a short-term person in Zencash and you're more in the speculative sort, then if the price spikes, then you could shut down a secure node or two and easily, you know, send your, send your Zen out, um, try and take some quick profits, buy back in later, put it back in your secure node, and you haven't lost all of your secure node income. But if you take out half your half of your um, super node stake in order to do that same thing with, you've lost that entire super node for the duration. So it's something to be, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages of each one. It's a little bit easier at the moment to set up a secure node just in terms of the overall experience, although it's not that much harder to run a super node, um, technically speaking. And that's what I'm going to get into in the next little part of this video is the day before secure node or super nodes went live, they released an update to the tracker, which broke about a third of the super nodes. And most of the nodes that broke ended up being on Contabo. And the reason for that is that Contabo, although IPv6 is enabled by default, it's not necessarily active by default. So I'll show you if you're using Contabo how you can activate your IPv6 so that it will work correctly. And I'll also go over to the couple changes that were made to configuration that you'd have to do before you can actually successfully run a supernode. So in the video that I had previously made about making your secure nodes, I had shown you how to put your IPv6 um, address into a a quadruple A record, and then how to check it, whether it had been propagated using Google Tools, uh, Google Dig. But there's another step that you really, really, really need to do to make sure that everything is working. And go to this website, ipv6now.com.au. It's an Australian website. If you go to the regular.com, it's going to take you to a, a um, domain name buying service. So ipv 6 now dot com dot au and then this particular um this particular um page is pingme.php and we're going to put um, an ip address in there and we're going to see what happens if it's correctly configured then it's going to return pinged and if you have correctly configured your um your address then when you ping it, it should show you both an IP, an IP4 and an IP6 response. So in this case, Zen Supernode 01.cryptobilly.us, and you could try this with any of the ones you see in the tracker. Wait a minute or two, and there we go. So we have a response back from the IP4, and it tells you what the IP4 address is, and we have a response back from the IPv6, and you can see what that is. So if the IPv6 is missing, then it's not going to work. You're not going to have a running supernode. And that's what about a third of supernodes happened to about a third of supernodes with just like 24 hours to launch. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And several of us were up until, you know, oof, long early in the morning trying to figure it out. So in the end, the issue is that by default, the Cantabo IP6 is not actually active. And what's interesting is that if you used ping six, like I showed you in the video, if you did ping six and then your um, IP address, it would work from inside the virtual private server. But if you went to another virtual private server and did it from there, it wouldn't work. And so it was something where we got fooled into thinking that it was working when it wasn't. So I'm going to show you how to enable that IPv6 address right now.
So here we are right now, and we're logged into Contabo, and I've actually already added one to this one. Now, you'll notice that here I'm using Ubuntu 18. This is how you how you do it in Ubuntu 18, which uses NetPlan, and then in a moment I'll log out and log into another server that uses um, Ubuntu 16, and I'll show you how to do it there. So we're going to do sudo slash, or sorry, nano slash etc slash NetPlan, and then if you hit tab again, it should bring up the only file in that directory, 01.netcfg.yaml, yet another markup language. All right, so this is a little bit easier actually than doing an Ubuntu 16, although figuring out how to do it in the first place can be a little daunting. So this right here is the default um, IP address that came with your server, and it ends in one. So all I did was I duplicated that line below and then you can change just this one to a two. Now I chose to change this one next to it to a two also, but you don't have to. You just need to have something other than one. So basically, copy this line, paste it below, and then edit anything. You can edit any of these things you like so that you have something there other than one. At this point, you would go ahead and save your file, and then you're going to use the commands sudo netplan generate, and then sudo netplan apply. At this point, you can type hostname minus i, capital I, and you'll see this is the default IP address, and here is the IP address that we just made. And you'll notice that it's in the compacted format, which is what you'll need for um, configuring Zen. The next thing you need to do is you'll need to, um, sorry, you'll need to edit the .zen slash zen.conf file and you'll have to add three lines that were not previously required. The first one is external IP equals, and you put your IP4 address. Then you do external IP again, and it equals, this time, your IPv6 address. And it needs to be in this compacted format, which the hostname minus I gave us conveniently enough. And then you need this port equals 9033, and you need to make sure that port is open on UFW. It should already be open by default, but you can check that by doing uh, sudo UFW status. So let's go ahead and do that just to make sure. And you can see that it's open. So um, the last thing that you might want to do well, the last thing you'd want to do once you've done this, sometimes you still can't access that host name or so that IP6 address that you created until you reboot the server. I don't know what it is. It should just automatically work, but in my experience, I've had to actually reboot for it to take. So that's pretty much it for Ubuntu 18. So now I'm going to log into another server and show you how to do it in Ubuntu 16. Okay, here we are back with an Ubuntu 16 server. And so in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to sudo nano slash etc network slash interfaces. And in this case, what you're going to see, if you scroll down to this part, it's going to say add additional IP addresses this way. And it's going to say up IP address add, the IP address slash the net mask, dev f0. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down a little bit below, and here is our default IP address, IP6 address, that by default doesn't actually do anything. And we're going to, below this little block, we're going to add up IP address add. And then we're going to do the same thing before. Just copy and paste it. And I change those, the zero and the one to a two and a two. But it could be anything you like, as long as something in this block is different than just 01 at the end. Slash 64, because that's our net mask. And then dev f zero. And then close out of that. And this time, what you would do is sudo systemctl restart networking. Now, for whatever reason, again, this would not work for me and I would get an error, can't restart networking, failed. And so 
you know, I'm like for 15 minutes trying to figure it out. I'm afraid to re reboot because what happens if I hose myself and I can't reboot? And, you know, and then I said, you know what? It's not working anyway. I'm just going to reboot it. And guess what? I rebooted it and it worked fine. Um, so that's what you'd want to do. And then if you check host name minus I, there it is. You've got your IP address. And that is pretty much it as far as making sure that your Supernode works under the new version of uh, the Zen Tracker.